Did you know one in 20 people worldwide are affected by fibromyalgia? This silent illness is often misunderstood because those living with it look fine, but they are in extreme pain. Today, we are talking with fibro warrior Tabitha Struther about how she found purpose in her pain, and you can too. Stay tuned. Hey friends, this is Sherry Jones, your Speak Life coach. Welcome to Sherry Speaks Life podcast. I'm excited you're here. On this podcast, you will learn the value of speaking life regardless of your circumstances. You're invited to join the conversation on your favorite podcast platform, or you can watch me live on Facebook or YouTube at Sherry Speaks Life. Are you ready to speak life? Let's get started. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Sherry Speaks Life podcast. I am your host, Sherry Jones, your Speak Life coach. And if you do not know this face or this voice, if you're listening later on the podcast, I am a certified Christian life coach, author, speaker, host of this podcast, and ministry leader of Glory Carriers Women's Network, which is an amazing group for Christian women on Facebook. But at the core of it all, I am an encourager and I come before you every Friday at 9 a.m. with an encouraging word to help you to make speaking life a lifestyle. You may be saying, well, Sherry, what is speaking life? Speaking life is taking your negative words and thoughts and transforming them into positive ones rooted in the word of God. And so that's what we talk about on this podcast. We talk about the word. We talk about the power of our words and we talk about their impact on our lives and how we can speak life in every area of our lives. And I'm excited about today's guest. As I mentioned in the top, we are talking to Fibro Warrior Tabitha Struther. Tabitha has an amazing testimony regarding her journey with fibromyalgia. She is also the host of Talking with Tabitha show, um, an amazing show. And she is also um, the mayor pro tem of, as she says, the big city of Chester, South Carolina. She is an action advocate, a community activist. She is an ordained evangelist, and she is the one of the associate ministers at Pine Grove Baptist Church in Columbia, in, excuse me, in Chester, South Carolina. She is a wife. She's a mom. She's a grandmother, and she is an amazing friend. She's all the things. Okay. (laughs) And so without further ado, I am going to bring up today's guest, Miss Tabitha Struther. Hello, hello, hello. A great morning, everyone. Sherry Jones, that was a terrific introduction. Girl, I'm going to have to take you on the road with me, honey. (laughs) I'll go girl. (laughs) How are you this morning? I am doing well. Thank you so much for your yes to be on the podcast this morning. You're welcome. Thank you for asking me. Yes, yes. And so just wanted to acknowledge the people that we see on real quick before we get into our conversation. I see Joanna, um, Diane, Yvonne, um, Millie. Thank you all so, so much for joining. If you're coming on um, live or watching the replay, please go ahead and share this broadcast out. If you're listening later on the podcast, on the YouTube, share it out because sharing is caring. And I know that this conversation is going to be impactful and powerful and it's going to bless someone. And so Tabitha, we're going to go ahead and hop on into our conversation. Okay. And so uh, the first question that I ask all of my guests is what does speaking life mean to you? Well, I'm going to have to go to the word on that since you said, you know, speaking life. So Proverbs 18, 21 tells us, and I'm using the ESV, it reads, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So with that, we have the power to speak health, wealth, good, bad, evil, whatever. So if you love to talk or not, 
It's in your tone. You shall have what you say. That's what the good book says. So speaking life, we have the power to do that. So how are you going to use your tongue? Because you're going to eat what you say. So speaking life to me means that whatever I speak, I'm going to eat it. So I want to eat good. And as you see, girl, even after this surgery, I thought, you know, hey, I'm going to be the lost about 50 pounds. I don't have to have, you know, the mommy makeover or anything. It has not worked that way. So for these ladies that's on the line, can y'all help us out? I mean, tell me what, what am I? I'm not speaking something right. You know, <laughs> Prophet oh, Regan, help us sister out. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not with you. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, you know, we have what we say. And as a women of God, people of God, you know, we are supposed to speak good things. We're supposed to speak the word of God so that we can have what God says because the Bible says that Jesus came that we will have abundant life. Not just life, but abundant life. Amen. Amen. And that is our core scripture here at Sherry Speaks Live. So thank you so much for sharing that and expounding on it. And like you said, um, you know, people talk about the power of life and death is in the tongue, but they miss that part. Those that love it will eat its fruit. So you're eating whatever you say. And as you said, we want to eat good. We want to eat good. So thank you so much for that. And so, um, Tabitha, as I mentioned before at the top, you have a powerful testimony um, regarding your journey living with fibromyalgia. Can you talk to our audience and, first of all, explain to us what is fibromyalgia? Because a lot of people may not know. And how has it impacted your life? Okay, so I'm going to give you the... um, the definition of fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia is a chronic widespread pain condition. And what chronic widespread pain is, the National Health Service defines chronic and widespread pain as a pain that carries on longer than 12 weeks and is not alleviated by medicines, whether prescribed and or, and or over the counter nor treatments at home or otherwise. And at home, at home treatments include hot baths, heating pads, um, topical rugs, etc. And these things may help a little bit, but the pain does not go away. And in some cases, these met- methods may make matters worse. And the widespread pain is throughout your body is not confined to one region. Now, sometimes the pain can be localized. In my case, it is localized to my left side. Um, And for a while, I used to say, you know, my left side was my bad side, but I had to realize that I was speaking that thing. So I reversed the curse. Amen. Amen. And I had to start saying that my left side feels bad sometimes. And then I had to reverse that curse and said, my left side at times hurt more. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We we have what we say and, and speak that thing. But that's what um, most people say. And, and fibromyalgia, it affects each person differently. So we, we have to be careful not to try to um, not to try to, and I'm trying to be politically correct because I know millions of people will see this, but we have to try to not put everyone in the same barrel because Sherry and and viewers, I was in my early twenties. I was around 21 when I began having pain and we had our own restaurant and they had gave me And I say they, my husband and our business partner, both, I call them the Tonys because both of them are named Tony. And they had given me the day off. And when I reached over to grab the phone that morning, because, you know, as women, we never really have the day off. So I was just going to sneak up there late because it's a mile from my house, really. And I was going to 
you know, sneak up there. And I reached over to get the phone, but I couldn't reach over. And I literally thought I had a stroke. They rushed me to the hospital and all of that. And the doctor was like, you can't drive, you can't do anything. And he just knew I was, you know, going to have to have surgery. And he was saying that I had all this wrong in my back and all of this. But when I went back to the hospital um, for my you know, check up and prepare for surgery and all of this. He was like, well, you have a degenerative disc issue and spondylothin ceases, or however you pronounce it, in my bag. He said, but you have a lumbar myalgia. You will need surgery um, in a few years, but I can't operate on you. He said, and I'm praying for you, but, you know, you're going to need other treatments. And though those of you who know me know i went to research and like what in the sam hill is a my who and all of that so i truly believe in divine connections and, and kingdom connections because the nurse practitioner at the time that i was seeing i went to her and i said this is what this man says and he's still telling me that i don't need to work and this that, and the other do you not realize i have children family all of this and she said oh so you have fibromyalgia. Fibro who? Am my what? What are you talking about? Hit it. Speak English, will you? And so she just laughed and we worked together. She sent me to, um, okay, we're going to come back to that. I just got diagnosed in March. Okay, Shante, we need to talk. And so I went to, um, he was a world-renowned specialist in fibromyalgia, Mr. Dr. Glenn McCain. He since passed away from a brain tumor. And I went to him in Charlotte. And like I said, I was in my early 20s. And I went in and I said, you know, here I am scared. Can you imagine me scared, right? And if you think I'm outspoken now, God has calmed this sister down. So mm -hmm. I went in and I'm like, okay, so doctor, this. And he was like, wait a minute. And I'm like, well, he didn't tell me to be quiet. What? <laughs> and so he looked at my chart. He said, so this is what you have. And I'm like, but I didn't say anything. He said, you didn't have to. I looked at your chart. He said, so this is what's happening. And he started naming off stuff. And I'm like, yes. And here I am thinking, he's a psychic. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. And I see my cousin Tammy McCree on here. So she laughing too. She, you know, you just can't see her. And um, I was like, oh, my God. And he was like, and this is what's going on. And I'm like, yes. And I'm like looking around. The earth is about to come to an end. And he's mm -hmm. telling me all of this. And then he says, in 15 years, you're going to be in a wheelchair. You're not going to be able to do this. And you're not going to be able to do that. And then I start saying, nope, he's from the devil, honey. The devil didn't send him because he, he lying. You know, I got kids. I got a husband. What you mean? And no, this uh uh. And he says, you you know, you do this and do this and all. And I'm like, mm -mm, the devil is a lie. So then my grandma started kicking in. That man don't know what he's talking about, honey. You better believe in the Lord. So I left from Charlotte all the way to Chester, crying and praying and talking to the Lord. I just went to my big mama's house. Oh, Lord, big mama, this man said this. And this man said that. And she said, okay, so who are you going to believe? That man or the Lord? Mm. And I'm thinking now, wait a minute, big mama, you ain't listening to what this man said. So for about two weeks, I had a pity party all around this house. Mm. And so I said, now, God, if you be God, then talk to me, show me something. And I went to the Christian bookstore, Pastor Annie McFadden, who owns the Christian bookstore here in Chester, gave me a book of healing scriptures. And I began to speak those healing scriptures mm -hmm. and came to myself. Y'all remember the prodigal son in the Bible. I came to myself and I said, I will take the medications and I will do what they say do, but I'm not going to be in a wheelchair. This disease, whatever it is, is not going to get the best of me. I may have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, but I'm not going to let it have me. And so I began to read those scriptures. Um, I began going, you know, I go to the doctors or whatever. But um, I have the aches and pains. There are days when I can't get out of the bed. There are days when I hurt 
Um, there are days that my my husband come in the house and he just shake his head because it smells like you remember the old liniment that Big Mom used to have. Yeah, it smells like that <laughs> up in here. There are days when I I'm crying because I'm aching and hurting, but I live with it. It does not run my life, and I manage it. And so with with all of that, and I said all of that so that you can understand the struggles that people with fibromyalgia have, the other things, the chronic fatigue, the IBS, the um, the locked jaw that you may have, the diverticulitis, all these other things that may come along with it. You can manage your symptoms. You can um, have your pity parties. You are allowed to because you are human, but don't let it overtake your life. You know, we are human. We, we deal with those things, but don't let it overtake your life. Know who you are and whose you are. I was once on 15 or 16 medications, something like that. I take two now. Praise God. That's Praise it. God. Mm. So good. The power. The power of, like you said, you spoke those healing scriptures over yourself. Mm -hmm. You didn't take in everything that that doctor was saying because you said, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord and that healing is my portion. And um, just such a powerful testimony of where you were and where you are now. And so that taps into my next question and really our topic, and I forgot to put our topic up, <laughs> but our topic, uh, finding purpose in your pain. Um, and you mentioned not, you know, you live with fibromyalgia, but not allowing it to overtake you. Can you share with our audience, how did you find your purpose in the midst of all of that pain you were um, experiencing and and what would you say to someone that's listening right now that is seeking purpose in their pain? With the um, with having the restaurant, I often wondered, God, why did you allow us to have this restaurant? And then we had to close it so hastily. We had we were just getting started. Um. It was this lady that would come in. She was a younger lady, but whatever. And I was like, you know why? We got to talking and why why don't you work? Whatever, whatever. And she said, because she was on disability. And I asked her what happened. And she said she had fibromyalgia. And, and I said, well, what is that? And she was telling me, you know, she's very painful, you know, chronic pain condition and messes with your muscles, your nerves, and you know, sometimes your joints and all of this. And and um you're right, Joanna, we have to be our own advocates. And I said, um, I said, well, what is that? Can you explain that to me? And so she really wouldn't explain it. And I don't know if she couldn't or just wouldn't. It was like she didn't want to talk about it. So when I got diagnosed and people would ask me, why wouldn't I work? I would explain it mm -hmm. because I felt like maybe if I had someone to go to, when I was diagnosed, because I would ask people and someone might say, yeah, you know, my cousin, they said she had that. And then I would hear, oh, you know, they say that's the crazy woman's disease. And I'm like, well, I mean, every woman got a little bit of cray cray in them, but. <laughs> you know, they, they do it. Um, and I'm like, why won't anyone really talk about this what what is the reason that people won't talk about this i'm not getting it and so i made up in my mind maybe it was me making up my mind and maybe it was god saying this is the purpose and so i formed a support group and initially you know we had a lot of turnout but one woman told me she said tabitha i like what you're doing and it's good but I've had it for so many years, she told me. And she said, it's nothing new. It's no groundbreaking medication. And the doctors are saying the same thing. And I like that you're trying to get the information out, but it's nothing new. So I think she was looking more for a cure. And I said, okay, so people are just looking for a cure. But what about the people that are just being diagnosed or the people that are suffering 
and don't don't know what they are suffering with or don't know what they have. So that gave me a purpose of let's get the information out there that this is what you may have. This is something that you may be suffering with or a loved one that you may know. So I believe that's how Holy Spirit prompted me to say, okay, let's, you know, you be the spokesperson in your area. You know, we have over, I don't know how many billion people in the world, but you put the information out and the people that, you know, I have attached to you or um, for you, you get it out to them and you speak to them, speak your truth and at least give them some help. And, you know, he'll do the rest. Amen. Amen. Um, I love that. I love what you were saying about you realized that there was a disconnect. People were not getting the help that they needed. They weren't getting the support that they needed. And so that was part of your purpose was to fill that gap to have your support system. And then ultimately, and we'll get into that with your books and things like that to help fill that gap, to help those people that are just diagnosed or those people that are working to live with fibromyalgia. And I think that speaks to all of us, no matter what our pain points are, um, because there's some people that may have the pain of loss or grief, or they may have the pain of, you know, divorce, or um, they may have um, mental or, or emotional struggles that they have gone through in their life. And so turn that into purpose. How can yes. you help someone uh, that needs help, someone that is seeking answers, someone that was where you are now? How can you bring them along to get them to where you are? Not saying that you have all the answers. Like you said, the lady was saying she was frustrated because she she said, you know, yeah, you're doing great, but we need more. That was not in your wheelhouse. That was not in your lane as far as the cure. But in your lane is the advocacy piece and helping those that have fibromyalgia. And so I think um, that speaks to all of us where whatever our pain point is, we can find purpose in it by bringing those along that need our support, need what we have. Um, you know, um, the Lord wastes nothing, um, as they mm. say. So everything that we go through, um, he can use uh, for his purpose, for his purpose. Amen. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for that. Just wanted to um, point out comment here. Well, Evangelist Miller has said that it was made taboo. That's why a lot of people weren't talking about it. Uh, but Shantae, you know, a uh, young lady was saying she was just diagnosed. Um, she said she's feeling like her head is swimming daily for the last week and she doesn't like medication. Um, but she is standing in faith that God is going to heal her. Um, so definitely that's a, that's a connection. That's someone that needs um, the information that you have to share. And so going into that, you wrote books about it. <laughs> Three to be <laughs> in fact. <laughs> you yeah. uh, you wrote two planners and then um, the ebook. So talk to our audience about the journey of um, being led to write those books. What inspired you? You had the support group, but what inspired you to write these books and to be an advocate um, for those that need that information? Um. Well, with the help of Sherry Jones <laughs> and April D. Metzler. Uh, both great authors and women of God, best-selling authors, okay? Um, I was inspired by Holy Spirit to, that's one way to get information out, right? Because people do read. And I was, you know, thinking one day, I was like, you know, y'all know I'm a little different, peculiar, not so different, but peculiar. And I was like, how can we, you know, do something for people that lives with live with fibromyalgia or chronic pain conditions. Do something a little different, um, but be helpful all at the same time. Because, you know, I feel like we want to do something, and sometimes we want to do things that mm, we want to do things sometimes that everyone else is doing. But that's not me. I don't want to do something that everyone else is doing. I want to do something that is going to be beneficial, right? That you can really use. Hence the um, the planners. So, you know, the first planner, that was um, a, a planner that, okay, but it was dated. You know, 
I think it was, what was it, 2023, 2022? No, 2022. Uh, 2021, 2022. Yeah. Um, and so that wasn't going to be, I mean, and it was good. It was good for then, and it was good for what we used it for. But again, it wasn't um, going to be something long long term we had the scriptures and everything too and then we did um the ebook how to know if you have fibromyalgia and i think that that was wonderful and that's of course undated because you can always get the ebook and if you think you're having um some issues and it could be fibromyalgia then you can definitely see because it talks about the symptoms of fibromyalgia the chronic pain, the headaches, the um, irritable bowel syndromes, all of the, the issues that you may have or, or what you may be going through. If you are a loved one or someone that you know may have fibromyalgia, go ahead and get them that ebook. But then the undated planner is Fibro and Me Living a Life of Purpose. And there it is. It's a monthly planner and it is undated. In this particular book, and this is my baby baby because we spent a little more time in this one and sherry's gonna make me cry um mm. because in this one we have monthly scriptures with those scriptures we we really took time in those scriptures because they are healing scriptures these are scriptures that i use to declare my healing i still use these scriptures okay because it's not like you just say them and, and you're done. No, ma'am. Um, Reverend Diane, we will give you the ebook information, all of the book information in just a moment. But there are scriptures in here like Psalms 6 and 2. Um, Have compassion on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal mm -hmm. me, Lord. My bones are in agony. Does anyone feel like that? Oh my and the title of that one is The Lord is Compassionate. So mm -hmm. you can declare. I decree and declare the Lord is compassionate on me or for me. And use that. Use that. I'm not going to tell you which month that is because I want you to go ahead and get the book. But we also have monthly reflections, right? So you can go through the month because we want you to set goals, right? So go through the month and set spiritual goals, physical goals, financial goals, health goals, emotional goals, and then reflect on those goals throughout the month and see what God has done and see what you want God to do. And then there are monthly um, intentions. And I'm going to go ahead and share something with you. We've already made the declarations for you, but you can go ahead and... Um, do what you want to do. We also have tips, fibro facts and tips. And what I did not know, but I had a couple people who are um, caregivers to purchase these planners and say that they use them because they are caregivers. And the people don't necessarily have fibromyalgia, but because they're caregivers and it helps with whatever conditions that the people they are caring for um, go through. So they, they, they are facts and tips in here. So I'm just going to share one with you. Um, it says stress tends to intensify fibromyalgia. I don't know mm -hmm. one thing that stress does not intensify. Okay. That part. So it says stress tends to intensify fibromyalgia onsets and flare ups. Be sure to minimize the amount of stress you take on, whether mentally, emotionally, or physically. Find ways to de decompress, such as meditating on scripture, taking a walk, listening to music, etc. And then it says, today I feel, and then write down how you feel. Things that make me feel better, write down what makes you feel better. And then my prayers, write down your prayers. I really found out as I did these myself, that, you know what, this really stressed me out today. I mm -hmm. felt like this today. You know, sometimes your kids, your jobs, life, or whatever. And then you make your prayer. And you know how we go to the doctor sometimes and we forget what we want to ask the doctor about? Mm -hmm. Don't worry. 
don't worry we have you covered in here too so it's just a lot of things that we thought of and placed in here and one thing shante specifically i'm talking to you since you mentioned that you were just diagnosed and those who have chronic pain we have a letter to yourself in here and then it's a a letter or a statement your best fibro day or chronic pain what mm -hmm. do you want to see on your best day how do you want to feel on your best day write it down we we tend to do better when we write things down and see it and how we want to do so um these are the public those are you know, the, our publications that we talk about or that we've written. And Sherry's going to put up how you can um, get those publications. And, and I do pray that even if you don't get it for yourself, if you know someone else, pass the information along. Because it, I know, I know, I know these scriptures work because they have worked for me. Mm hmm Yes, yes. And we praise God. We praise God for your obedience um, to write the uh, the book, how to know um, if you have fibromyalgia, but especially your baby, <laughs> the um, undated planner. Um, it, as she said, there was a lot of care that was put into that, a lot of prayer, um, a lot of intention in everything that she included in that planner. And as um, and, uh, Reverend Jody had mentioned that the declarations and the things can help you, even if you don't have fibromyalgia, you have another chronic um, pain yes. illness, or you're just going through any type of illness and you need hope and encouragement. And so I have it on the screen, but if you go to bit.ly forward slash TSM dash merch, M-E-R-C-H. You can purchase those books and looking at her other merchandise. Um, but we'll talk about that again as well later on in the broadcast because I did have just a couple more questions for you, Tabitha. Okay. Um, as you're going through uh, just, you know, living with fibromyalgia, and I, and I emphasize that because Tabitha emphasized that. She doesn't want it to uh, be seen as you know, you're just struggling or a burden or whatever, but you're living and you're thriving with fibromyalgia. What do you do um, when you have those um, intense pain moments? You know, as you said, your left side is hurting really, really bad. Um, what helps you to endure and to push through those moments? And, um, and what would you say, you know, to our audience to help them? I guess it's the same thing, whatever helps you. But um, just share with us a little bit of what you do in those moments. When you first asked me that question, <laughs> before we got on, what went through my mind, <laughs> everybody's seen color purple, right? You know, when Oprah was out there and she was yelling, get me out of here. When she, <laughs> she had knocked that man out. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like that. You just want to get out of the whole situation. Just get me out of here. But seriously, there are a lot of things that I do. And I, I put them in the um, undated planner as well. Like a massage. I usually get a massage. I try to get a massage every month. But sometimes I'm busy. And my massage therapist gets on me. Miss Brittany. She probably watched this and say, uh-huh, Miss Tab. <laughs> but um, I try to get a massage every month, every other month, because that really relaxes me and the um, relaxes my muscles. Because with fibromyalgia, I I, I guess the, the term would be muscle spasms. I mm -hmm. call them knots all over your body. But I know the medical term would probably be muscle spasms. So there are muscle spasms all over. And so that helps out a lot. There is a company that, thank you, Sherry Jones, turning me on to my loyal tea company. And they make some phenomenal tea. And she's a Christian lady. She is so pleasant. We converse back and forth. And they have tea because of, I think she said her daughter has fibromyalgia or something like that. But anyway, the different types of teas for different um, illnesses and, 
and whether it's thank you, whether it is for, you know, you having days with, with your stomach, whether it's your head, um, muscle aches or whatever. And so she sent me some to try. Listen, that is, it's just so calming, so relaxing. So sometimes I just have to have a, a cup of tea. Sometimes it's some um, council meetings. I come back, I need to decompress. And some days it's just fibromyalgia, the fibro aches and pains. And I have to um, soak in a hot tub with Epsom salt and the they call it sports alcohol now, but we know it as the green rubbing alcohol. And is that is actually a detox for your body in at least 20 minutes in warm water and the Epsom salt and the green alcohol, the water is warm as you can stand it for about 15, 20 minutes to detox your body. So those are a couple things that I do to help detox me. Those are some of the the things that I do to help decompress and please stay hydrated. Drink as much water as you can. Sometimes I get tired of just plain water and I add some crystal light in there. So, or fruit, do some fruit in your water, you know, um, whether it's sherry nose, the lemons, the oranges or whatever, add fruit because that, will help. Those are just some tips that, you know, that I do and hopefully it will help you and please minimize. And I know, I know there's different types of stresses that comes on anxiety. And, and I will tell anyone, talk to your healthcare provider. I'm not a healthcare provider. I can just share with you some of the things that I do that I have done. I'm 46. Um, now, Praise God in a couple of weeks. Hallelujah. I'll be 47. But those are just some of the things that I've learned. And it's been over 15 years. I'm not in a wheelchair. I'm wearing a sling now because I just had surgery on my shoulder three weeks ago. But and I don't have any walking apparatuses, praise God. But I've learned to do some some natural things. And and again, like I said, I'm from 15 medications to two medications and um i believe essential oil roll on yes essential oils and and ladies even with your hair products try to do natural um oils and things like that in your hair because what we ingest that does help as well Mm -hmm. um share i was gonna bring up shantae's um, question um, but before that, I had said uh, just for the uh, for our listening audience, um, Carolyn had mentioned she uses an essential oil blend of olive oil, eucalyptus, frankincense, and myrrh, and that helps with pain as well. Uh, but Shante has asked a um, powerful question: How can you get your family to understand what you're dealing with? Because I try to let them know I can't do all I used to, which is having all responsibilities on me. Very powerful question, Tapta. Can you help her with that? Thank you for your question, Shantae, which is it's okay. It's hard. It's hard. I thank God that I have a strong support system in my family. It wasn't always easy. At the time that I was diagnosed, my children were really small and my husband was an over-the-road driver. So it was really hard. I had to teach my children things at six and eight that they probably shouldn't have been being taught because I couldn't do a lot of things. They were taught what mommy's medications were. They were taught when my husband... He actually had to take some days off so he could go to the doctor with me so that he could understand what this was. I got handouts and pamphlets so that they could see what this was. My mom had to go to the doctor with me sometimes so that they could understand what I was going through. Now, I'm going to tell you, all of them still may not understand, and that's okay. You pray, 
and ask God for a core group. Mm -hmm. Now, your family dynamics is going to change. Your friendships, your core group or friends, that's going to change. And that's okay. Ask God to send you your team. Mm -hmm. Ask God to send you your core group. And it may just be three or four. That's okay. Because your core group is going to stick with you, stick by you. Friends left, family members turned away, and that's okay. Because, see, some people think you're going to be playing. Some people think you're just lazy. Some people think you just don't want to do anything and all of that. I get it. I went through that. Church members as well. That's okay. Is it hurtful? God, yes, it is. The ones that you thought that were going to stick by you and be there, they're not. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that, Tabitha. And as you see, she says um, she doesn't have that support system. It's like they don't care. Um, but as you stated, you have to pray for that core group, even if it's those three or four people that got your back, you know, that really want to understand. And um, Carolyn said this question is going to help so many people. Um, and, and I believe that it has, um, and your your response has helped Tabitha as well. Um, we all need a support system. We all need, I mean, as they say, sometimes the older you get, the smaller your circle becomes because when you're going through is when you really find out who your true friends are, who your true family members are, even family members. Um, as Tabitha said, you want to know who really has your back? Go through something. Amen. Something. Um, and then, um, Carolyn says, God will diminish to replenish. Hallelujah. Um, Millie says, God will send what you really need. Amen. Amen. And then Joanna says, prayer changes things in all situations. Amen. Amen. Um, well, before the broadcast, I asked Tabitha to share a scripture. Um, and I believe this will help our listeners and viewers as well. I asked her to share a scripture that helped her on her journey of finding purpose in pain. And so I'm going to put it up on the screen for our viewers and read it um, for our listeners. It says, my health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. And that is Psalms 73. 26, and that is the New Living Translation. Um, expound on that for us, Tabitha, and how this scripture helped you. I believe it. It just, it already says it all. Jesus is mine. He is, he is my healer. He, he does everything. Um, even when it seems that my health is failing, even when it it seems that I'm weak. He's there. He's mine forever. He won't leave me. He won't forsake me. All the promises that he has made, he strengthens me. So when my health fails, he's my strength. Mm -hmm. He strengthens my heart to go through everything that I need to go through. He strengthens me. When my spirit is weak, when I feel like everyone else has given up on me and I feel like I may not have any support, he strengthens me. He strengthens me in the times that I need to be strengthened. He is mine forever. When everyone else may seem to walk away and don't understand what I'm going through, he is my strength. He is mine. I may not have anybody else. When everybody else may turn their back or seem that they have turned my back, when I feel like, okay, I can't go through it. one more ounce of pain, I can't deal with this. He is mine forever and ever and ever. So guess what? God, I thank you. God, I thank you. When I say, God, I thank you and you are mine. You know what? You remember we used to have our little toys, right? We would have our toys and it's yours and can't nobody take it. You know, you know, somebody comes to your house, especially your little cousins or something. And what your parents say, but well, you got to share. And you'd be like, I don't want mm -hmm. to. It's mine. He is mine. And I don't want to share. 
Now you know sometimes I have to share them with Sister yeah. Carolyn and I have to share them with Sister Latasha. Share I have to share them with Sherry. But God is mine. Mm. And, and even though I'm sharing him with all of you all, it doesn't feel like it because he always shows up in every situation that I need him to be. He is my Abba. Okay. And when I need to lay my head on his chest and tell him all about it, he's there. Amen. So, Amen. yeah. Uh, he is. He is mine. He's yours. Everyone that's out there, he is yours. And he is there. Um, and as Tapta said, when, when it seems like there's nobody else, no one else understands he understands. Thank you so much for sharing that powerful um, scripture. I see um, Shante says, hallelujah, great scripture. And then um, Cassandra says, yes, ma'am. Uh, Millie says, that's his word and his promise. Amen. Uh, Latasha says, I'm here for you, sis. So you're getting the love. You're getting the love. And then um, Joanna you. says, give God your weakness and he'll give you his strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Shante says prayers and supplication. Um, and Carolyn says, make it personal. Yes. Yes. And uh, Millie says, hallelujah. He is mine. Amen. And then Diane says, it's a comfort to know that he is mine while being Abba to all his other children, to his other children. Glory to God. Glory to God. Such a good God. Y'all get us started. Y'all get us started. Right, <laughs> right, right. He is so good. We got to give him the praise. We got to give yes. him the praise. We can't, we can't yes. do anything less than give him the praise. And that's part of speaking life. That's part of the purpose of everything that we do. That's the part of our walking, our breathing, our living, our talking is to give him praise. Give so y'all ain't get anything else out this broadcast, <laughs> which I know y'all got a lot, but give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, Tabitha, this has been an amazing conversation. I know that it has been a blessing to those that are listening, that are watching. And so tell the people how they can get connected to you because we know they're gonna they wanna stay connected with you. So so tell them all the all the information. Everything, everything social media at talking with Tabitha. That's it. Everything is talking with Tabitha. Um I, Sherry, I thank you for inviting me on your platform this morning. I have truly enjoyed uh, conversating with all of you this morning. Thank you, audience, for joining. And for those who catch the replay, thank you for tuning in. And I do hope and pray that you have received something to help you turn your pain into purpose and that you will gain um something out of it, whatever your purpose may be. And if you feel like this wasn't for you, maybe you can help someone else to turn their pain into purpose. Or perhaps when you go through something, because listen, if you are not in the storm, coming out of the storm, you're getting ready to go into the storm. So Amen. I do pray that each and every one of you gain something out of this today. And to my sister Shantae, just know that you have a village of sisters praying for you. I do not know what area you are in, but oh, yeah. you can message Sherry. You can message myself, mm -hmm. Evangelist Tabitha Struther on Facebook personally or talking with Tabitha, like I said, on everything. And we can definitely connect because you have a village of sisters that are praying for you, praying with you, and just know that God has you covered, and he is yours as well. He is yours, and the glory, if you are not a member, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug this real quick, mm -hmm. Glory Carriers Women's Network, because we see that you are a woman, and if you are saved and have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, go ahead and become a 
a member of Glory Carriers Women's Network, and you will see you have at least 500 women that will support you. And um, yeah, and so we're there for you to support you and connect with you. And I'm quite sure that there is a woman in your area or women, and we will connect and do the best that we can to um, support you in your journey. And again, we love you all and, and thank you all. And and I'm not closing out because I know Sherry has some more to say, but you know my 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 tagline. Y'all know what my tagline is. And I'm gonna go ahead and say because I don't have anything else. I'm just gonna um no, you gotta you pray to. out. So to oh, I'm gonna pray us out. Oh, okay. Well then I, I won't say it. I won't say it because y'all know what my tagline goes. She, she can't say her tagline first, and then then I y'all know I say my tagline too, but we we're gonna say that at the very, very end. Um, but Shante right. said, okay, I'll get that information. And she said, thank you so much. I praise God for the encouragement. And um, and also just wanted to um, share with you all for the purpose of our listeners as well. Remember, go to bit.ly forward slash TSM dash merch to purchase Tabitha's books and her merchandise. She has tap talking with Tabitha Mug and Tumblr and different things like that that you can purchase as well. But if you want that ebook, how to know if you have fibromyalgia, um, go to that. And also, oh, she's showing the, the talking with Tabitha um, Tumblr and also the, um, you know, the planners, the link and the link to purchase the planner is also on that site as well. Again, that's bit.ly forward slash TSM dash merch and um i just thank you tapta i thank you so much for being here i thank you audience for watching and tuning in and i just want to encourage you if you're not already connected to me of course you can follow me on all platforms as well facebook instagram youtube at sherry speaks life go to sherry speaks life.com and it's a one-stop shop my books are there my coaching program is there glory carriers is there everything that you need to know about sherry speaks life and sherry jones is at sherry speaks life.com I encourage you to come back next Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to watch us live. Or if you're listening on the podcast next Wednesday, we'll be dropping another episode. Let's just keep this communication and this relationship going and stay connected um, as we have another dynamic guest that will come and be coming before you next Friday as well um, to continue our conversation about speaking life and make it a lifestyle. Um, so Tabitha, if you go ahead and um, close us out in prayer and, you know, then we're going to do our taglines, but we'll close us out in prayer. Um, you all, let's join her. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for your grace, dear God, and your mercy. God, we thank you that you are ours. God, we thank you that we know that you are our healer, dear God. Thank you, Lord God, for the compassion that you have for us. God, we bless your name today. God, we thank you for this conversation. God, we thank you that we know that there is nothing too hard for you. God, that includes fibromyalgia. That includes any chronic condition, Lord God. That includes high blood pressure, high cholesterol, Lord God, diabetes, Lord God, heart conditions, whatever it is, Lord God. Nothing is too hard for you. So we thank you, Lord God, for being our healer. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our nurse. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our Abba Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our great provider. God, we just thank you that you are all things, Lord God, all things to us. And we bless your holy name. God, we thank you for everyone that was on this live this morning. Father, we pray that they, that they received something from you. Lord God, it, this just wasn't a conversation just to be talking. But God, we thank you that we have spoken life because of who you are. Lord, but God, because of who you are, we are. God, thank you that we have life and life more abundantly. You, did, you didn't just put us here, Lord God, just to be here and for us just to be stagnant. But God, you put us here for life and life more abundantly, and we bless your holy name. And God, for those that will catch the replay, Lord God, that you will impart in them, Lord God, what it is to be 
in you. God, give us a purpose, Lord God. What is our purpose? Lord God, what is the purpose in our pain, Lord God? Oh God, we pray for our sister Shantae today, Lord God. Father God, though right now she feels that she doesn't have that, that support system. Oh God, we bless your name today and we speak life into her situation. God, thank you for giving her that support system, Lord God, for her emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, Lord God. Just do, Lord God. God, show up for her like she's never seen before, Lord God. Do a new thing in her life today, Lord God. It's Lord God, show her. Mm, just bless her real good, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God. God, we just thank you for how you love on us today. Thank you for sharing, Lord God, in her ministry, Lord God. For this is her ministry, Lord God. Thank you for the platform that you've given her, Lord God. Anoint every guest that shall come on here, Lord God. And God, anyone or anything that does not mean her any good, we cut them down at the root right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we love you today. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we do pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank, thank you. Lord. We thank you. I just want to acknowledge um, Millie says great speak life broadcast today. Thank God. My partners love this. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And everyone is saying amen in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. Well, we have come to the end of our conversation. We truly, truly, truly appreciate you all for connecting with us this morning. Um, join us again next Friday at 9 a.m. for a another episode of Sherry Speaks Life podcast. And I will allow my guest to say her tagline. <laughs> All right, now y'all say it with me, but don't say it if you don't mean it. Because remember, death and life is in the power of your tongue, and mm -hmm. you shall eat of that fruit. So say it with me now. I love you, and there is absolutely, positively, nothing you can do about it. Be blessed. And as I always say, we must always, not just when you feel like it, not just when it's convenient but you must always speak life. Y'all take care and be blessed. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Sherry Speaks Life podcast. I hope it was a blessing to you and taught you something new about speaking life. I would love to connect with you. Visit SherrySpeaksLife.com to learn more about my coaching program, my books, and other services. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Sherry Speaks Life. I look forward to chatting with you next time. Remember to always speak life.